Hi, welcome to The Visitation here on St. Gabriel Radio, AM 820. I am Mary Beth Everhart, and I'm here with the bestest of friends, Lisa Iglesias. Hi, Mary Beth. How hey. are you today? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I love gathering with you. I love it, too. Thank you for the time. I love that we are blessed with a space where we can come together and not only just share you and me, but the, the Lord has given us this this forum, this place where um, we get to share our hearts, have, I mean, how blessed am I that I get to have girlfriend conversation and, and then ask the Lord that it be fruitful enough that it speaks to the hearts of others, right? Yeah. We that's, hate to gather. That's humbling. And I love that image of being with our friends here on the porch. That's Amen. very nice. Amen. Well, on those notes, I, ooh, um, I have some, some harder things to kind of bring to the porch today, which is, you know, the, the concept of when your family members, when you have family members who have stepped away from the church or who are questioning their, um, their relationship with the Lord, um, even some the existence of the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. And whether they be your children or, um, you know, family members that you see on, you know, on a holiday, it's, it's agonizing. It's gut wrenching. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I usually see too. So again, being really vulnerable, I see this happen in my own kids, usually around confirmation time. Mm -hmm. And the first time this happened, like floored me mm -hmm. tears. How could you, you know, <laughs> just this. And, and that was the wrong way to handle it. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you know, it was the wrong way. Um, because what this child was saying is like, hey, I, the, the, this is the big thing you're asking of me. Mm -hmm. And um, my response, again, being really vulnerable at that time was just like, you don't want to make it, you know, that's your choice. But, you know, mm -hmm. and now well, it's I have terrifying as a mom like that. It, would have it, been, It's just like, been where scary. will you be yeah. without <laughs> this? Right. <laughs> Um, as, as if the Lord steps away from them. Yeah, no. Right. Right. Good point. And, and the idea is that, or like the realization now as a, um, 20 years into parenting mm -hmm. mom is that it is so good for them to question the Lord. It is so good for them to love that version of exploring and you know i want them i want them to investigate their faith i want them to own it yeah i mean don't we always hear um that that kind of searching the striving the yarning for the the um that the, the emptiness of like i don't believe in or whatever um or is this real or um, they, we keep hearing that that is a foundation for a super strong faith going forward. And so, you know, for me, you know, we take heart in that is that, um, perhaps this like desert time for them is going to be a foundation of a very strong closeness with Jesus. Right. I mean, who was it in scripture? It was Elijah that wrestled with the Lord. Mm. Right. And older, wiser mom. <laughs> um, and notice, by the way, that I'm owning the older I, I and wiser. I'm putting that, that on me now. Mm. Um, but older, wiser mom is realizing that I want my kids to wrestle with the Lord. Um, I Because I'm guessing that you are in a stage of parenting when you are growing from your older children's relationship with the Lord. Like they're teaching you. Oh, completely. They've been <laughs> because because you have um, allowed them that space to forge their own identity with the Lord. Does that make sense? I mean, I don't know how much of me is in that. I mean, that's generous to kind of say, but um, but in their experience and um, you know, giving of themselves, pouring themselves out in ministry and such, you know, I, I'm watching you know faith in action and having been part of, you know, some of those questions and, you know, conversations. I mean, I too was that mom who was like, uh, what's happening? Why are they questioning God and his existence and et cetera? And, um, you hit, you know, I'm tossing this over to you, Doug. <laughs> you know, well, to we take husband. it as a reflection of our own parenting, yeah. right? 
And that's the error. We take it as like, what did I do wrong? Mm -hmm. This is about me. And it, I think what I'm learning is that it's really not about me. And again, less of me, more of you, Lord. What the child um, or not child, you Mm -hmm. know, what the family member is saying is like, hey, I want to, I actually want to have this conversation, even if they're like door closed. No. Mm -hmm. So, but they're, they're just by the means of them saying it, Mm -hmm. they're, they're searching. Right. They're searching and they're asserting themselves, right? They're like, okay, fine. I'm your child, but I'm going to say this back at you. And a part of me is always kind of like, oh, this is so defiant. You know, like you're just saying that because, you know, my heart is, you know, I've given it to Jesus and I, and so you're going to, you're trying to hit at the deepest uh, most painful spot and you're going to try and say this to me and um well, a beautiful thing like again i admit that like you know when those kind of questions have come up i'm like oh what do i how do i answer this i don't know what to do um my my husband is oh is oh has always been of the mind like oh tell me about that question or um he is reading between the lines because you know he's it's his it's his gift it's his heart his he wants to know you know the what where, where was the genesis of this? Like, are are you hurting? And he might not say those words, but his word, his conversation will lead them to be able to get to that place of like, well, this happened. Well, now that's a whole nother thing. That's a different conversation. It's not like, give me the three reasons you believe in God. It's this happened. And it may take, you know, lots of conversation. It could take years to get to that, com- that place of safety for them. But I love that you brought up conversation because we learned early on um, at our parish, St. John Newman, where we both attended at one time together, mm-hmm. that um, your glory story mm-hmm. matters. The st- your your three minute elevator story testimony um, is it three minutes? It might be thirty seconds. I hope it's yeah, three minutes. I, I think um, it's a thirty second. <laughs> Elevator. I yeah. want three minutes, Lord. Give me three. I don't know if they um, might be walking away. I know. Like, oh, wait, 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 no, they're getting to the good part. That's where I hit like stop on the, I freak them out, hit the, you know, <laughs> stop elevator button. Um, but I, I, you know, that 30 second version of why I'm a Christian, I, we all need to be able to, to verbalize that, but it's hard. You know, I recently had, um, one of my sons say like, Hey, why are you a Christian? Mm-hmm. And because he is a deep thinker and because he is a seeker, I I was like, whoa, let me think on it. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, me, I have to write everything out and I have to I have to process. And my story would encompass, you know, faith and hope and love and um, and how I see the Lord working um, and, and how those have been man- made manifest in my life. Right. That would be a portion of my <clears throat> three minute glory story but <laughs> i th- i think that as agonizing and just gut wrenching as it is to have one of your children um or a family member um be away from the church there's a it's like a paradoxical piece of being a christian where you're like he's working the lord is working mm Okay, that's another level of faith right there. Because I don't know if I, I, I would love to feel like that. I think, I think, um, but you're, I, I would say yes, as far as like, I've experienced that where I will just say, Lord, let your will be done in this life. You know, your will, um, order the situation all according to your will. Those words just, they increase my trust in him. And if I can trust him more than I can say that more frequently I can because I hear otherwise I'm grasping I can't I can't you know bring someone to faith I mean like that that is something between Jesus and the person I mean we can be there we can be you there can. on the fringes with our you know I guess maybe living a life that chooses maybe Jesus. walking with them yeah I'm true yeah I mean you can't you can't I can't make someone yeah a Christian right yeah right but can I bring them to Jesus yeah, I mean, I think that's, I think what you're saying, walking with someone is definitely. I know. have seen, I mean, girl, you have brought me yeah. to Jesus. Oh. Well, you have, Praise the Lord. you know, and, and I don't think there's a time in my life where I've been like, you know, I'm done. Well, same. But there have been times where I'm like, this is like, what are you doing? Yeah. And, and, and it is those moments that can be breaking points, yes. right? 
Yes. Um, and many, it, especially young people today, mm-hmm. are like, you know, mm, I like this isn't for me it's too hard right well and the 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 voices today are very loud saying too hard of course yeah you're right absolutely what you think is right is right and how you feel in this is right god god commandments uh oh beatitudes and like that what is that that sounds hard let's not follow that let's just do what you want to do which is like the path to <laughs> it's and, path to hell <laughs> right and it's super challenging because mm-hmm. You know, you, you watch someone, and, and I'm being really careful here because it's tempting to be like, you know, you watch these people, and I hate, I don't often say hate, yeah. that phrase, these people. Yeah, no. You watch someone who is struggling, yeah, right, or seeking, searching, yes, and um, and often, why are they, where are they mentally, why are they searching? Mm. It's because they're missing something. They're 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 feeling a loss. Mm. Right. What is it that. And so then, I mean, I'm just going to step right in there mm-hmm. and I'm going to be like, um, it, it's not ta da here I am. But like, right. let me let me show you. Yeah. Let me show you, Jesus. I can do that by being present. Right. I can be do that by, um, you know, like we talk about a ministry of presence. I can do that um, by being a witness of joy mm. because amid the struggles in my family life. And that's been the case. That's it's kind of a bit of my family's journey of like people will say, I don't understand how you can be so happy with mm-hmm. all the surgeries or everything that's going on, you know, like um, you know, you had cancer and yet you continue and you just you're just um a light. Well the I'm you like, continue oh, it's not me. Yeah, the you continue I think is my has been the example to me is that you you and as well as as your husband Ryan, but like you continue, like there is no other option, and and yeah, I think you've said that before. I think I've, um, you know, when I was was grateful to like realize, oh my gosh, I think we're becoming closer friends. This is so nice. <laughs> I remember one time saying a hard question like, "Hey, Mary Beth, I mean, are you like okay? My name's not Job. That's enough. I don't know why. You know, why are you choosing this?" Why, why is this happening to us? You never say that, not in my presence. And so I think that has been the example to me. And, I, and I'm and i glad that you, uh, you know, allow me to just like kind of mention that because um, and don't don't push it off because um, I think often like if we were in mass, maybe and fathers, you know, preaching the homily and they'll they'll often say, I mean, I know um St. Brendan's a lot of talk about being you know missionary disciples and I love that because people are really leaning into that and trying to like okay tell me more like what what does this mean and how do I how do I live you know like that which is beautiful um but sometimes I think you know like okay well as I always ask you here well what are those steps what are the five ways what are the (laughs) things I should say to um help someone who is in that place that you're saying And, and I love that you describe that like there is a loss. I think that's perfect. There is a loss. Like even if it's even if they will explain to you that, oh no, my feelings have been hurt this way, or they hurt me like this, but this thing happened, or a thing was said to me, and so I don't go to church anymore. Um, even if it's that, it's not. It's a loss. And you, that is it. Thank you, Jesus. That's the word because they've lost trust. Right? They've lost their place there. They've lost a belonging. They're not being seen in their moment of hurt. Um, and so. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to definitely gonna pray into that. Like that is, and so even in your own life, you know, like how do you, where are those moments where you feel like, oh, I've been, I've been hurt here. You know, I, I too, you know, I'm searching for my way back. You're listening to The Visitation here on St. Gabriel Radio. I'm Mary Beth Eberhard here with Lisa Iglesias. And we have been talking about the challenges of, having family members who have either stepped away from the faith or who are, um, who have just made that hard break and the, the, the pain, um, the sadness, I guess, disappointment, all those very real emotions that you can have coupled with the reality of our Christian belief that the Lord is, is at work. Mm. You know, we are workers in the vineyard, but he is, I mean, he is just ever present with Mm -hmm. them. And 
I have been, I have been wrestling with that reality where I feel a calling to go out and be, you know, like, um, okay, well, I'm going to take this kid and I'm going to be like, we're going to have coffee and, you know, maybe I'll just, um, gingerly bring up the, (laughs) you know, the Jesus word or, Mm -hmm. but, um, where I have found the biggest blessing or the biggest conversion or the, where I see the Lord working is in speaking to family, the speaking to those who are um, struggling with where, uh, why do you think you're sad? What is it you feel like you are missing? Mm-hmm. And uh, that that void is is Jesus. You know, I have seen in our family. Mm. I've seen a sadness. I've seen, um, a, uh, a pain Mm. and very, it's, it's, it's a tenuous. Is that right word? The writer part gets me here, but like, it's a tenuous road where you're, you, you want to say, you know why you're, you're sad, you know, like, let me tell you why. And this is what you need to do. You need Jesus. Stop being sad. (laughs) Right. And, and there's like an aggressive part of you want that you want to be like, you know, well, let me tell you, you need Jesus. You stepped away. You you need, you need the sacraments. You need, you need, you need. Right. I could tell you what's wrong. And and boy, will they just like turn and oh, yeah. go. Right. But the peace that comes with recognizing that like the Lord is at work. Mm-hmm. Um, we can be witnesses for them. We can be present. We can equip ourselves with not only our um, our glory story, elevator pitch, if you will, but also the um, the ability to be um, a sounding board for their questions, mm-hmm. because those who are searching are not um, that they have wounds, just like mm-hmm. we have wounds, yes, and those wounds have torn them away from the heart of Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's where the sadness comes from as a mother. Mm -hmm. When one of my kids or one of my family members or a friend has stepped away from the Lord, Mm -hmm. it's like, Oh, there's a wound I cannot fix. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yet I know who can. Mm -hmm. And that is, I mean, that's just, there's a, it's like, you're like, Oh, you know, I'm, I know the Lord's working. And yet, you know, the, the paradox, yeah. it really is an odd thing of being a Christian. I remember when one of my kids, two of my kids were in surgery, one in Pennsylvania, one at children's. I think you were actually at children's with, um, the family at one time, um, my family and, um, and one was super critical. Mm-hmm. Like we were, we were going to lose her mm-hmm. and I'm at the Ronald McDonald house, you know, one of those rare 20 minute breaks where I know that the nurses have my kid and I have praise music going on in my room and I'm sobbing. And honestly, I mean, I'm, I'm throwing a pillow. I'm mm-hmm. so angry and I've got praise music and I call father Dave Sizemore and I'm like, I, I'm, I'm a mess. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm like, I'm like, who am I right now? Like I cannot, I'm like, I am just like, where is Jesus in here? And then I'm like, and then, and then I'm like, I'm having a breakdown because at the same moment, I'm like, I'm like, I speak Jesus, you know, like, <laughs> And, and and he's like, he's like, you don't think that the Blessed Mother had these moments? Mm. Wow. You know, you don't think that um, you're calling out amid the struggle in, and you persevering, mm-hmm. you stepping forward um, is a witness. Mm-hmm. Like this is, this is holy ground. Right. And that's what um, I think is missing. I think they need to see. Mm. Um, need they they need to say it's okay. Mm-hmm. I think the accompaniment, you know, is it feels almost like a sterile word after what you just shared. Like a, I think though that that is that's what keeps ringing true to me is you know like I remember back in like tenth grade, um, we had uh, our our youth minister in Florida had. Had, was a graduate of Taylor University, so a Christian university, Bible mm-hmm. college. And um, so there was a lot of like, you know, 
not completely Catholic-y things that we like did. They weren't bad. They weren't wrong, but they're like, you know, little things. Like, but like one of the ones that kind of keeps coming back to me is like, you know, make a friend, be a friend, bring a friend to Christ, you know, like, and I'm sure that's kind of Catholic too, you know, but, um, but it was one of the things that we would you talk about. You need a about. little jingle for that. You know, yeah, I don't make have friend, one. Friend, there we go. And um, so, uh, but, but I think, you know, once, once folks are into that place where they're feeling so negative or, you know, they're even able to like say something like vehemently mean about the faith or whatever, or it's almost, I don't know about you, but it's almost like, and perhaps it's, um, because my husband is a deacon and there's certain times you can almost like, you can feel the question coming, you Mm -hmm. know, about whatever, why can't women be deacons? I've had that one. I've, uh, are you okay? Why are you okay with just being his wife? Like very interesting questions to pop up. And, um, but you could see like there was almost an aggressiveness or whatever. But I think, you know, getting to see that, um, getting to see the, the, the fact that we respond in joy, we respond in love, um, is a, is a way of them seeing that, you know what, Jesus is all about just love. And so we have to just watch our, you know, help ourselves not go to a place of like, uh, fear of like, Oh, what's someone going to say to me or whatever, you know, cause that's, that's sometimes what happens to me is I'm afraid of the confrontation. I'm afraid of what, what might this conversation be about? Whereas, um, my husband just is, he's just, he really talk about bringing you to Christ. Like he, he helps me so much because I'll watch him hear, you know, questions and, and just listen. And, 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 uh, well, he welcomes it. He's like, wants to have the question you know and here i'm like worried about the question (laughs) well i think that that's beautiful because you know we are often asked we are often asked you know why are you a christian but why are you not Mm. why are you not a christian and not in a why are you not a christian (laughs) why are you not a christian yeah that's interesting i don't know if i've ever yeah i mean like it's just a it's an it's an interesting thing to ponder it, it's it's not meant in a confrontational way. Yeah. It's just almost in a, like, um, tell me, tell yeah. me your story. Tell me your story. Yeah. That's because, beautiful. you know, like in that, in their, in, in that, then you hear the wound. Cause if they're, yeah. cause I'm not a Christian because, because, yeah. and then I'm going to hear the wound and I can minister to the wound. Yeah. I think, tell me your story. I'm just going to write that down right here because like, I think that is, that is a, that's a kindness. It's a, it's a moment. Like I'm, I'm willing to listen. I want to know. And, um, and then with, I, you know, I'm also always very struck with is that, um, our faith, the Catholic faith has the, yeah, of course it has the answer that would just kind of sound silly. You know, Christ has the answer, but he is. And so like the, um, the sacraments, you know, big word for Jesus loving us, right. Bringing us back in close to his heart. You know, whether it's confession, whether it's Holy Eucharist, you know, all the different things and like, um, but it's all there. And so, 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 so the people that we know, we love, um, that have, that are searching and grasping all, out here in the world, like all these different things, like whether it's a different religion or the crystal or where my bare feet outside and ground or whatever it is that they're going to do to, to feel whole and, and, and seen and loved, like all that, it's actually just like, it's in this like very old and ancient thing. Oh, it's called the Catholic church. It's like, it's all here and you can actually feel and be healed and, and be received and welcomed right here. It's like, it's all here. Like we just, it would, it does take some time to like unwrap the gifts and to, and to kind of like recognize and learn more, but but it is all here. Praise God. Amen. I think we need to, I think we need to pray for, for the courage to live out our Christian identity. I think we need to pray for the courage to, um, again, I, I don't know. I'm very struck by, you know, why aren't you Christian? And the, the ability, the, the gift to minister to the hearts through our Christian identity, our Catholic Christian identity. I think that's very, very very necessary. So Lord, I just ask you as we wrap up this podcast today to just 
fill our hearts with the wisdom necessary when those conversations come, those encounters. Give us the, the grace to be your light, to be the joy, to radiate the joy of your heart to others, that they see that um, as they are searching, it is you that they seek. And may, may the love that you have in our hearts, may it draw them to yours. In your name we pray. Amen. Son, Spirit, amen. Son, Holy Spirit. Thanks for joining us here on the visitation on our front porch. We hope you join us next time. We look forward to seeing you.